Hey folks, Ryan here from Mr. L's Gaming and we are here live on another lovely Tuesday evening and we've got a good one here today. There has been so much happening in Mr. L Gaming land and I've got another and more updates are on their way here this evening here and I got to give some shout outs. It looks like we already have Tyler is already well into the chat here. Hey, Zen. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Tyler. How's it going? I knew Tyler was going to be here because we're going to be playing some Ashes Reborn, which if you're following us in the Tabletop Express Discord channel, which you should be, there's a link in the description of this video. You should be joining us on the Tabletop Express. And I'll have to give the gents a nice big shout out. If you have not subscribed to the Tabletop Express YouTube channel just yet, they are five, count about five subscribers away from 500 subscribers. Go on over there, give them a subscribe, like a bunch of their videos. They go live every now and then with their call aboard shows, and they're going to be doing their top 20 this month. Oh, it's a lot of exciting action hopping over to the Tabletop Express. So definitely go give them a uh, shout out. Give them a subscribe. It will be, you know, just so happens. Yeah, it's just lovely. It's just be, be be good people. Subscribe to people. Even if you don't watch the content, just go subscribe to them. Uh, and he's, Tyler's here and saying, going well, played the Blight of Neverset deck today and had a lot of fun with it. Not my favorite, but pretty easy to figure out. I, I will reflect that, th those sentiments. It, it is it is a very good set, I believe. It's not doing anything super groundbreaking uh, for me. Uh, currently, it is a good it, it is a good set. There are some a lot of really really good cards in there, and yeah, uh, over, overall, it's a pretty it's a pretty solid set. I, I wouldn't rank it my favorite out of the Red Rains uh, cycles just yet, but you know what? It's it's a solid it's a solid entry. It's a solid entry, giving us some really nice really cool cards. Um, what is going on right now is we've got oh new game update new game update new game update right there nova roma is in the house i have not I, it's all punched it's all organized rules have been read wasn't comfortable enough to put it on stream tonight but guaranteed next tuesday night i will be having that on the table we will learn to play and we will play through the solo mode of nova roma can't wait for that one it is very exciting it was my number one game that i did not get to play last year that came out last year and now there is a bigger release there's a bigger release now happening just got my hands on it we will be playing that one next week and speak of really handsome gentlemen joining us in the chat here maurice andrews jr what's up man thank you for joining us this evening Everything's going good. Everything's going well here. Uh, the um, Ashes Reborn is one of my favorite games. Get to play it. Uh, I had a really busy weekend and week so far, so I thought, hey, I'm going to go on stream tonight. Need to be playing something familiar, and what's more familiar to me right now than Ashes Reborn? And I'll be taking on the Frostwild Scourge uh, nemesis for us this way. And Maurice is still saying, I still need to grab, grab this and give it a shot. I, with your love of Marvel champions and card games, whatnot, I think you will slide into this game really, really quite comfortably, Maurice. Uh, I, I think that once you're able to give it a shot, I think you may really, really enjoy it. Uh, and, 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 and Tyler's here in the chat here and he, he is a very bad, also a bad influence on the, um, getting people to try out this game. But yes, 1000% give it a try, Maurice. I don't think you will be disappointed. What else is going on in <laughs> bad is subjective. He says, what else is going on? We just had Mr. Rao gaming. Uh, it was my it was my birthday this past weekend, uh, so I had a few gentlemen over and we got in a good couple of games. It was a nice, real big game session here. We got a good game of Blood Rage in, one of my favorite games of all time. We got to get that one played. It was epic. It was awesome. I did terrible. I think I came in third out of the four player game, uh, but it was a 
it was just as magical as I always remember it. Blood Rage is just one of those games. Just I think it's going to stand the test of time for me at least. Uh, and then afterwards, we got to play a game of Last Light uh, from Gray Fox Games, Roy Kennedy. Um, and that's another one that is slowly growing on me. Uh, and I'm very impressed of what they've been able to do with the game of Last Light. Maurice here says, oh, oh wait, okay, wait, I'm going to go back here. Tyler says, thought I did get someone on Blue Sky to get a master set in Corpse of Virus based on my post there. Yes, let's go get more people in on this one. Tyler Lance here, convincing enough argument for me. I'll grab it. <laughs> Do I need to get Ashes Reborn and Ren Raids to do the solo? So there were, so you'll need the Ashes Reborn Master Set. It's the big square red box that is behind me somewhere right there, just over my shoulder right now. Actually, I should just bring it up front. You'll need to grab one of these. It's the Master Set. It comes with all of the tokens. It comes with all of the tokens. It comes with all of the dice that you're going to need to get started. It's not going to come with all of the dice in the game, but it gets you all of the dice that you're going to get you started. It gets you six pre-con decks that are very good, very nice and viable. You need to get that one, and that one lets you to play uh, player versus player. But then if you want to do solo or cooperative, you're going to need to also grab yourself a Red Reigns Corpse of Viros box. And I believe on Plaid Hat Games' website right now, I think they do have a bundle where you can get both of them together. And this one's also going to give you another pre-con deck that you can play with. And it gives you some more Phoenix Born specific cards for four of the Phoenix Borns. So these two products together will be enough to get you going and learning the game and playing it solo versus co-op. Uh, solo and co-op. I'll just put these down here. Uh, Tyler says, uh, looks like it's about 70 bucks us, uh, for the both combined. Um, yeah, he says, and that's the cost of a Marvel champions box. That's doable core set. That is. Yep. Yeah. Ab yeah, absolutely. I think the entry point is very good. It's very affordable, um, at this point. And then just beware that I think that if you do end up liking it, there is so much content out there, just kind of like Marvel champions. There is so much content out there that is going to get that I think you're going to get the hook, the hook line and sinker uh, in here. Uh, we don't need to talk about the cost to get the full collection. <laughs> uh, well, at least Tyler, at least you did it um, piecewise. Uh, when I first got into ashes reborn, the, so my story about ashes reborn is that I didn't actually get it. The solo co-op mode wasn't out yet. Uh, I was playing it uh, PvP. I got it over the pandemic, and uh, I was doing webcam games. Uh, I was doing webcam games with a friend of mine um, out in British Columbia, Rob, from the Meeple Dungeon podcast and the Meeple Dungeon YouTube channel. Uh, we did games together, uh, and I believe those games still exist way back. I think you have to look up the Cardboard Conjecture YouTube channel. Uh, that was my old stomping grounds for a while. Uh, we had, uh, and we did a best of seven pre-con deck, uh, series, kind of like a tournament type thing. So, uh, and I, when I bought it, it was, the, it was right when it was all re-released. It was the reborn set. So I got every, I bought everything as one big, massive collection, um, all right at the, right at the very beginning. So. And Tyler says is that interesting. I still have yet to play player versus player game, but want to. I think and I keep mentioning this too. I need to get you on the channel. I need to get Vincent on back on the channel. I need to get some more player versus player uh, games in on this. Um, be very easy to stream. I, there is something out there that we could try out. We could try out that Ash Techie. Uh, website, uh, I believe it's the program that we use that people use to kind of play Ashes online. Uh, I think we might be able to do that. Is all of the content, non including Ren Reigns, compatible with the Solo? Everything, everything's one hundred percent compatible. I am playing uh, a deck tonight that is just one of the expansion decks, and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to play against the uh chimera here tonight and yeah everything is 100 percent viable in solo and co-op and yeah uh and maybe towards the end of the stream i can talk a little bit about deck building um as well because they're the pre-con decks are very 
very good. They're very well put together and you get a good experience with each of the pre-con decks that you will play with. And the deck building after that one is it, it's so awesome and it's so open. I, I'll, I'll talk a little about that about that at the at the end because I have a video coming out later this week where I um will uh, I have done I've done some deck building for it uh, to play in play in that game. Uh, Tyler says I'm always in for that. Just give me a heads up. Yeah, absolutely. Just got to get it where I'm with my schedule here. Uh, it's going to get very busy here in Mr. L Gaming Land. And uh, at the very start of May, uh, I'm coaching both of my kids' soccer teams uh, this year, outdoor soccer teams this year. So our weeks are going to be very busy for the most part. Uh, that, 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 that's multiple nights. That's about at least four nights a week that we're going to be c committing to that. So I'll be very tired. So I'm going to just say right now you're going to be seeing a lot <laughs> i'm probably saying a lot of ashes reborn and games that are familiar uh to me and maybe like quick light games are going to be focused on this channel for the next little while because yeah i'm not going to have a whole heck of a lot of time uh just the way that that's just the way it's going to go Tyler here saying deck building is one aspect that I'm going to start to dive into once I play the remaining five decks that I haven't played solo yet. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's fantastic that they really did a really great job on every Phoenix born. Every card in the game can go with any Phoenix born. And just as long as you build the right dice pool around the cards that you have. Um, yeah. You, you, and anything, anything's viable. Yeah, there, there is a lot. There is a lot of content. I can't. What 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 are they up to right now for Phoenix Borns? I can't remember what they said. Is there, there? Nope, not thirty two. No, nope, not thirty two. Twenty something. Oh gosh, Tyler might actually have that. Thirty one total decks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's thirty one. Oh, there's thirty one. There's twenty eight Phoenix Born, but there's thirty one total different precon decks, including the solo uh, Red Rains decks that come with each of them. So yes, there is so many things. And right now we're in kind of like that fan. We're in that good stage of the game because right now we're in the red rains cycle. So this is, they have three chimera boxes out there. There's three red rain boxes, corpse of virus, frost wild scourge, which I'm going to be playing tonight. Uh, blight of never set just came out and lords uh sorry the siege of lords wall is on its way they've just revealed a lot of the previews for that particular game and there is right now i believe they have announced that they are making they are making seven red rains boxes currently there's going to be seven of them originally planned because they all revolve around one of the certain types of magic in the game uh, Lords of Siege, Lords of Siege Wall. I keep trying to call it Lords of Siege. Siege of Lords Wall. That's the way we're supposed to say it. Um, that one's going to be fire. I am so excited for that particular set. There is so many great cards that they have announced for that game. And we have not even seen what the Chimera is going to do yet. But I got a funny feeling that that Chimera is going to be awesome to play with. Play with. Play against. Play against. Tyler here says he's got a spreadsheet full of tracking my plays, including wins and losses with the Phoenix Born and what aspects that I've played against. Nicely done. Very well done. You should share that on Board Game Geek. I'm sure there's people out there that be, would be very interested in something um, like that if it doesn't already exist on Board Game Geek. I think you would. I, I think people would very much be um, be up for that. Be up for that. Everything's turning into LCGs. <laughs> It's honestly the best way. It's, it's the best way. I, I am so over the random booster packs and collecting and trying to buy my game, uh, buy my deck, essentially. Uh, I just need to play six games for the rest of my life now. <laughs> but isn't that true? Isn't that true? I remember doing a episode of Cardboard Conjecture a while, a long time ago. Like, I mean, a long time ago. 
that if you were stranded on a desert island and you were to want to have like certain games trapped with you, what would you get? And I believe Marvel Champions and Arkham Horror, the card game, were two games that I had labeled as games that I would want on my deserted island because I could just literally play them forever. Uh, now I can add to that list Ashes Reborn because, well, it, it is becoming one of my favorite, if not my favorite game of all time at this meme. I worked my Excel magic to get the formulas and uh, whatnot in there. Wow. Well done. Well done. Well, I think without further ado, I think we should get right into the gameplay tonight. Um, if you haven't done so already and you're watching this one, uh, please put a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I, I, I am on my road to 1,000 subscribers. and We're already at, what, 626 now um, as of the time of this recording. So really, really appreciate everybody's support and what they're doing and helping me out with the channel, putting likes on the videos, commenting on the videos. Uh, engaging with me in the Discord channel, the Tabletop Express Discord channel, uh, ex engaging with me over on Instagram, where I have become the most active as of late because I really, really, but I do pop in on threads and Blue Sky every now and then. Uh, yeah, and all of them, you can just find me at Mr. Rao uh, Gaming. And if you ever wanted to email me, it's Mr. Rao Gaming at gmail.com. All righty. Well, let's hop on over here. Let's grab that top down screen and let's get things all set up for the Frost Wild Scourge. And I thought I'd give myself a little bit of a challenge. Done. I haven't done this uh, in a while. I haven't put the, I haven't done this on stream in quite some time. Actually, I don't even think I put it on stream ever. I think I only have a, one or two videos out there currently where I'm going to take a look at a standard level two gameplay. I'm not taking on standard level one. Standard level one is what you kind of say, hey, that's what you want to kind of like, you know, test out your decks, uh, try to get your footing underneath you type thing. Uh, but I am going to try standard level two tonight. I, I've had I've had quite a bit of a streak um, of defeating standard level one for a while. So let's try let's try it out. This this may blow up in my face tonight, but it's maybe good content for people out there. Um, to see what a standard level two gameplay may look like. And really the big difference is, is now that the Chimera's aspect field now has five cards instead of four cards on it. So that is going to be big. That's going to, that's pretty much the big difference that's going to happen uh, this time around. Uh, the alt, uh, the Frost Wild Scourge has a life of 35 and we will go now the only thing that i have not chosen yet for tonight is i have not chosen the aspect that i'm going to play the frost wild scourge comes with the mighty aspect and the storm aspect um i'll just roll a dice to see which one we're going to take on tonight uh we'll say uh mighty is going to be odds and storm is going to be evens and we got a number nine. We got an odds. So we'll take on the mighty aspect tonight. I'll put those ones off to the side here. Give this a quick little how do you do shuffle, and we will be on our way. Tyler here says that this may give me get me to bump my difficulty up to standard two since I've had a good win rate at standard one now. Yeah. Yeah, once you once you're starting to get really familiar with the game and how the game kind of works and uh, once you start getting to know some of what kinds of cards you're going to be dealing with, um, standard one, I would say if you're an experienced, uh, if you're an experienced Ashes Reborn player, standard level one is going to be you know, a little bit on the easier side. You're going to probably win more times than you're going to lose. Uh, if you only if you lose, you're probably got some pretty darn bad luck on card draws or some really bad luck on what asp and the order in which the aspects um, are coming out in play. Massive Vault here is in the chat here. Hey, come welcome on into the game. He's in Mighty, which we are going to play against tonight. And the Phoenix Born that I have chosen for tonight is Rymia Carewarn, uh, the Phoenix Born of Shadow, Shadow Wreck. I almost said Shadow Rock. Luckily, I got my glasses on here. Uh, Phoenix Born of Shadow Wreck. Uh, and I'll explain exactly what she can all do for us. I'm just going to do this one here. Give that, 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 that. And I think that's pretty good in shuffled. We're going to set up the 
um, threat area. We looks like we need a looks like we need a one blood, uh, three twos. So there's a two, a two, a two, and another one. So we need a battlefield of a threat field of five. Whoops, got that all in there. Stream elements, what are you saying? I'm playing Summoner Wars online tonight. That is not the case. Why is it saying that? So, hmm, that is interesting. Okay. Okay, put that right up there. Let's just kind of set things up just a little bit better. Just like that, just like that, just like that. I realize that that seems to be going on a little bit of an angle. Let's try and do, do that one like that. Oh, that probably means that this is also off a little by a little bit. Let's do it like that. Oh, there we go. That wasn't that wasn't too terrible. Uh, Massive all here is usually do you usually play solo games? And I do. I play a ton of solo games. Uh, it's pretty much lately it's the main way that i can get most of my gameplay in so i'll play lots of card games uh, ashes were born here is one of my current favorites that i love 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 to death uh, i do have played marvel champions in the past i've played lots of arkham horror in the past uh, and any board games that have solo modes dungeon crawlers i i I play a little bit of everything. I, I play lots of different types of games. Solo games are a game that I do enjoy playing quite, quite a bit. All right, so we are all set up for the Frostwild Scourge. Standard level two. Standard level two here. And we are going to be playing with Rhymira, Rhymia Careworn. Um, she's got a battlefield of four and a spell board of five. Battlefield meaning I can have four units out in the out at the board at a time, and my spell board means I can have five spells um, out at the time. And she's got a pretty interesting ability here. It's a side action called Visions. Uh, it says look at the top three cards of a target draw pile. So that could either be my draw pile or it could actually even be the Chimera's draw pile. Uh, I may spend one basic die and place one exhaustion token on this card to place one of those cards at the bottom of the draw pile and get to place the remaining looked at cards on the top of the draw pile in any order. So kind of can manipulate the decks a little bit. And it's a side action, which means I can just kind of, and I, you know what, I don't have to spend it. It says I may spend the basic dice to place one. I can actually just spend it as a side action just to look at what the next few cards that are going to be coming up, which is just enough information for me most of the time. Calvin, welcome, welcome to the chat. I don't think I've seen you in the chat before. Got to get everything lined up just right. Yeah, absolutely. You got to make things look nice for the audience, for the viewers. Everything is out there for you, for everybody out there. Okay, now Ashes Reborn, one of the best things, one of the funnest things about this game is that you don't just randomly draw your starting hand of cards. No siree, you get to pick your first five cards you get to select which cards you want to start the game with in your hand it is one of the best things about this one um and before i do that though i gotta make sure i mention that we are using sympathy magic and illusion illusion magic in this game and for our dice powers so that means yes we are using sympathy down here which allows us to draw a card and then I may choose to uh, choose one card in my hand and place it at the bottom of my draw pile. Uh, and then we're also using Illusion, which allows us to lower two dice in a target opponent's active pool down by one level. And that is very handy in Red Rain's mode, because if these dice ever get, get uh, enough of them, those lousy Red Rain tokens are going to take over and do bad things for us. Let's take a look at our first five here tonight. We have a couple summon spells. We've got summon ghostly mount, which is a, there, there are some conjurations in here that will allow us to, and this one allows us to actually pick which ones we add. That's quite unique to this particular deck. 
Uh, we've got three of them that are here. We got the Spectral Charger mount that could possibly come into play. Has an attack for life two. We have the Pale Steed mount that's got the stats reversed there. It's an attack to life four. Or if we get this spell powered up enough, we actually can have the Nightmare mount, which has an attack for life four, which is a very good, very good sized unit in this game. Uh, then we also have the other summon spell, which is our Ancestor Spirit, which is those other ones that I just put on the top here. We got There's two of them in our deck that we can have out there here, and we got the Ancestor Spirit that has an attack to life one. Uh, guidance, when this unit comes into play, you may draw one card. If you do, place one card from your hand on the bottom of your draw pile. So again, lots of that deck manipulation here in this in this game. So those are our two summon spells. Um, we also have another ready spell that we can put onto our board here called Augury. I believe I'm saying that right. Uh, for a class and a basic, it says when the spell comes into play, put three status tokens on it. Uh, and then I can, as a main action, I can, oh, sorry, as a side action, I can search my draw pile. And essentially, it's going to let me search for cards as long as the number of status tokens on this card is equal to or less than the magic cost that I could just get to select. Then we got a couple allies in our starting hand. We've got the hollow, which is really cool. It's got an attack two life of one. It's got hex. When this unit comes into play, you may lower two dice in a target opponent's active pool. If I roll these dice the way that I normally do, that's going to come in handy. And, of course, we've got Ancestral Army. It's quite expensive. It's got three basic dice, but at least we get to put two. When this comes into play, we get to put two of those Ancestor Spirits onto our battlefield. All right, pitter-patter, let's get at her. Those are our first five cards. Let's get on to the gameplay. The very first thing that we need to do on this game is <laughs> Tyler here says, I definitely didn't follow the recommended first five when playing Rhymea, <laughs> which that again, like um, you will definitely want to part of your arsenal playing this game is you do definitely want to have ashes dot live. I should put that into, I should actually type that into the uh, chat here. Ashes dot live is a fantastic resource that Come on, folks. What, what's going on here? Ashes.live is a fantastic, fantastic resource of community-created decks. All the pre-constructed decks are in there. Um, I'll put those into everything here. And they are fantastic resources, especially if you want to figure out what are the first five recommendations for the pre-con decks. Uh, Maurice Andrews says, I'm about to head to the gym. Always good to see you, my brother. Wish you the best reaching 1,000. You'll get that get that easily, bro. Thank you very much, Maurice. Your words are always so heartfelt, and I really hope that you, I've really seen your content growing as of late once again. Get that goal. Get to that gym. Wait, beat up those pads. Get, get right down to it. You got whatever your goal you've set here, you're going to smash that goal, definitely. And Tyler here said they swapped Augury for Battles here, who looks like a strong ally. Yeah, it, I've seen I've seen that one in here too. It seems it does seem like a really strong ally. Um, but with Augury, I can essentially I can actually bring that into play. I can actually search with Augury, I can actually search out that card. So essentially it's kind of part of my first five. Um, if I'm reading the text on this card, uh, kind of if, if I'm reading the text on this card correctly, I can kind of search out those different types of cards okay first things first let's take our mitt full of dice we've got all 10 of our dice which we're going to be using as our magic and let's roll it up okay and what did i get not very much so i got one power illusion uh i've got a few class illusions uh and one basic illusion we got a basic one basic sympathy and a whole bunch of class sympathy. Okay, so that is an interesting mix of magic that we're going to use for our first time around here. So let's take a look at what we want to bring in. Well, 
I don't know exactly know what the Chimera is going to be bringing at us yet, just yet, but I always found that it's really quite interesting if we bring in, if we do some of our uh, ready spells straight off the bat, so for a main action, and one of my basics, I'm just going to take a look here what kind of basics I'm going to need, um, and I think if I spent this one basic, it's going to be just enough for us. And then for my side action, I think that I'll just use Rhymea's Visions, and I'm going to look at the top three cards of my deck, which are another Summon Ancestor Spirit, a Dark Presence, and a Resonance. So as of right now, I know that those three are going to be cards that I am going to draw at the end of this round. Now, I can spend a basic die, and I can exhaust her, which means I'm not going to get to use this ability again. And I can put one of these cards at the bottom of my... Put one of these cards at the bottom of my deck, but I don't... They all actually... Dark Presence doesn't seem that good. Mm, terrifying focus, reduce the... Dark Presence is not that fantastic, so I am going to spend one basic. And I'm going to put Dark Presence at the bottom of my deck. And I will put these two cards on back on top of my deck. There you go. So that was Visions, and I have to exhaust Rhymea because I did that. So her ability is no longer available to me. Okay, let's go on to the Chimera's turn. Chimera's turns are really quite fun. Um, you roll one of these uh, Red Rains dice, and you roll one of these uh, the Behavior dice, and we'll see what happens. So, Red Rains token, that's usually quite standard for how I'd like to roll. And then we rolled a number 8, and that's going to correspond to the Behavior card over here. And it looks like a 7 through 9 says we are going to reveal and then attach a Vigor Conjure Alteration spell to the Revealed Aspect. So I'll grab those. Those are off to the side over here. There's a Vigor. And we will Reveal. And we've got Charge Fist coming into play here. Charge Fist is going to get some status tokens on it. At the start of the Chimera's turn, remove one status token from this unit. If Then if that was the last status token on this unit, deal three damage. To the opposing players target Phoenix Born and re-roll all non. That is nasty. That is crud. Uh, but we and then it's also got this vigor, which means uh, when this unit's destroyed, we have to re-roll one of those uh, red rains dice. Dang. Okay. Well, that was that's that is something, isn't it? That is something. Let's go on to our turn here, and our turn may be to, oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, do we, I don't think I want to do that one just yet, but maybe, maybe we do want to get some units into play so we can start dealing with that, that one's, a, oh, I guess I didn't put the status tokens on there, uh, one, two, and three, there we go. There we go. Okay, this one's really quite expensive, but I think I will do it. I still need one of those, so I make sure I've got to keep one of those around. I do need to keep that one around, and I do need to keep some. So I think for one, one, two, three dice, I'm going to play down ancestral army maybe i'll put it right above yeah okay uh, i'll put down ancestral army and it says when this unit comes into play place two ancestor spirit conjurations onto your battlefield so ancestor spirit and ancestor spirit which now i am at three out of the four units that i am allowed to have in play and as a side action, which shall I do as a side action? I don't think I really need to do much of a side action just yet. So, I think we'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at that. 
Okay, so now we'll see what the Chimera is going to want to do to us. Okay, we got a basic and we got a seven, which again is one of those a reveal. Ooh. War cry. After this aspect or adjacent aspect is declared as an attacker, attach a vigor conjuration alteration spell to this attacker. Mm. Okay, so another vigor is going to come attach to that one because it was the seven. And I totally forgot there's one thing that I like to forget status tokens. I forgot to take that status token off. It's when all of those status tokens come off that something really bad is going to happen to us. Hopefully we can try to maybe deal with that a little bit. Oh, boy, gosh. I am really dropping the ball here. When this unit comes into play, you may draw one card. If you do, place one card from your hand onto the bottom of your draw pile. Oh, when this unit comes into play. So I could do that twice. Oh, and I do know what those two cards were. Oh, dear. That is that is a spicy meatball because I do know what one of those cards were. One card that I kind of wanted. Why not? I should have triggered one of these. I'm not. I'm only going to trigger one. I'm not going to trigger both. I'm just going to trigger one of them. Uh, so when I do, I may draw one card. I am going to draw that card. It was the resonance card. And I am going to then pitch my, I'll put my summon ancestor spirits. Might that might drop that might bite me in the butt, but I'm gonna try it like that one. And then I'm not gonna resolve this one. Oof, boy, can't believe I did that. Okay, we did their thing. Now it is on to our turn here. Okay, and then I am going to. Oh boy. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Side action. Sure. As a side action, I am going to play Resonance. That's kind of like what I want here. Um, so I am going to bring in Resonance here. It's going to cost me two Sympathy Class and a Basic. But I like it anyways because it says, When this spell comes into play, uh, select two dice in your exhausted pool and place them in your active pool on a side of your choice. So I'm going to bring in another wolf's head and I'm going to bring in a horse. So I'm going to bring in a couple powers. When you play the spell, place it face up under a ready spell on your spell board. I'm going to put it underneath summon ghostly mount because now that summon ghostly mount is focused at least once. If I can get another summon ghostly mount out here, that is when I can allow me to bring out those nightmare ste my nightmare mounts. So I just need one more card here in order to trigger that. And that was all a side action on resonance. Now my main action, Vincent. Hey, he is here in the chat. Hey everybody, sorry for being late. Was watching Saving Sakic. Ooh, sounds interesting. It, is that a Mm. Oh, ghostly mount. Love those. Yeah, I do like the ghostly mounts. Hmm. What's saving Sackic? <clears throat> Sounds interesting. Sounds like like when I say here Sackic, I think of Joe Sackic, like the hockey player. <laughs> um, main action is I think that I am just going to send one of my ancestor spirits to take care of that charge fist because I do do not like that charge fist at all. So I think Ancestor Spirit here is going to attack uh, charge fist. So we have to roll to see if the Chimera is going to guard against that attack. And it's a seven, so that is not. He's not going to guard. The guy only guard on nine and above. So that attack is going to go through. They are going to counter us with a three. We to attack them with a two. This is gone. So those status tokens are gone. That was a blood of one. So the Chimera takes a hit. And since it was head vigor, we have to re-roll one basic rage dice. And it still ends up being a basic. So charge fist discarded, vigor discarded, ancestor spirit done for. Just like that. 
It's exactly that. It is a documentary about Colorado keeping Sackick during free agent season in 1997. Oh, was there some drama? Oh, there must have been some drama around that. I'm, I haven't. I don't follow hockey like to a T or anything like that. But sounds really sounds really interesting. Alrighty. Well, that was my turn there. So now, hmm. Let's take a look here. Oh, no. Now it's the uh, Chimeras. The Chimeras turn. Chimeras turn. So basic and a or a dice and a blah, blah. Ooh, I'm rolling pretty good. Ooh, I am rolling good. That's a one, which is just reveal the card. Oh, darn. It's another war cry. Um, after this aspect or adjacent aspect is declared as an attacker, attach a vigor conjure. Ooh, boy. Well, at least they're attacks are not super lots <laughs> okay so now on to our turn what shall i do well that one was i thought i was going to be able to do something a little bit more with that one but hmm mm -mm -mm. i thought i was going to roll another red rains along the way here um <laughs> Remove an unexhausted ally you control from play. If you do, place a pan. Yeah, probably should do one of those. Probably should do one of those mounts. Get that quick charge mount out there ASAP. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Okay, let's um, let's let's do it right now. Then I'm gonna spend. I guess I gotta spend this, and I gotta spend this one, and exhaust. This could be. Oh, this could be a main action or a side action. Oh, I didn't actually read that. That's actually kind of cool. Um, we'll call this my side action then. We'll exhaust this for these two dice, um, and we will play pay play. The Pale Steed or the Spectral Charger? Uh, Spectral Charger has Quick Strike. That is probably the one that Tyler wants us to try to get out. So I agree. That one seems to be good because we have War Cries out there that have high life values on them. So there's my side action. Uh, quick Strike, not sure. Well, hey, it. It's, a, it's got charger in the name that you're 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 good Tyler you're good he says quit not charge but hey uh okay that will well that that's my side action well then why not I'll just use my main action yeah I'll use my main action to uh I'll I guess I guess I'll attack this war cry since my damage is dealt it deals its damage before the units in battle with it um that one's got the higher attack value, so I guess I will. Uh, I'll try attacking it. Uh, we'll see if the Frostwild's Courage um, guards for this. And that's a nine. Yeah, so the Frostwild's Courage does guard that attack. Boo earns. Boo earns. Oh, wait, I was supposed to put this guy underneath here. Wasn't I? Uh, face down. Yeah, I was supposed to do that. Okay. Uh, so four damage going to the uh, Frostwild Scourge. And that is going to be that. What did I move? The Ancestral Army has to go under the mount. Yeah, I uh, yep, caught that. Caught that one. <laughs> I always forget that with the mounts. Ghostly mount are tough to get in PvP. Our opponent is the our opponent is bright. I should try versus the Chimera. Might have more successes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I haven't actually. Played, this is why I th I don't think I've played Rymira. Rymia. I when I was looking at my stats, I don't. I if I did, I forgot to log the play. But I don't think that I've played Rymia. Uh, before. Okay, so side action was to bring out the Spectral Charge Mount, and then my main action was to attack. Uh, the Chimera guarded it, so they are down to 30. They're down to 30 life. 
let's take a look at what's going to happen next. Whoops, don't roll one of those, roll this. Well, I am having all sorts of luck with those red rains dice tonight. Uh, behavior two is a, it's another reveal. Uh, sweeping strike. This is a nasty one. Sweeping strike here. Um, after this unit destroys a unit an opponent controls by attacking, resolve the following X times. That opponent must place one wound token on their Phoenix Born or rightmost unit. X is the current attack value of this unit. Oh, so bad. Oh, it's so nasty. Sweeping strike. And then we've got all those war cries in, available. Ugh, yuck. Okay. I have only got a couple of dice left, and uh, I've spent more dice than I probably wanted to, so... Uh, okay. Well, I guess I am going to bring out... I was really hoping that my I was really hoping that my dice rolls were a little bit worse than this one because I think one of my big things that I'm going to do right now is I will spend one of my wolf heads uh, and as main action bring out my hollow my hollow here and uh, when this unit comes into play you may lower two dice in a target opponent's active pool by one level so I'll just reduce that by one. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, sure, let's try it like that. And I'm not gonna do a, I'm not gonna do a side action. So let's take a look at what the Chimera is gonna do against us now. There's another Red Reigns. Should have just waited one more turn. Should have probably just attacked with that Ancestor Spirit. Uh, number 11, 11, 11, attach a stun Conjured Alteration spell to the opposing player's target rightmost unexhausted unit and then reveal ugh they just brought you in and now you're stunned spell cannot be attached to a card that already has a stun attached to it this attack is considered now to be exhausted so I can unstun it by lowering one non-basic die in my active pool by one level to discard this spell okay and then I have to reveal which is wild throw. Uh, when this unit comes into play, attach a stun conjured alteration spell to the opposing player's target leftmost unit and reposition that unit to the right of their rightmost unit. Oh, okay. So ancestor spirit then gets a stun and I have to put it on the right side of my Battlefield. Eek. Okay, so it has the same thing. It is now stunned and considered exhausted. Well, that was lovely. Luckily, I have a card in my hand that I can't really do much with right now. It's too expensive for the amount of dice that I have. So I think maybe we'll just get rid of one of these. Sure. Yeah, let's get rid of one of these. Let's unstun. Let's lower one non-basic. So I'll lower that to a class side, and I'll do the hollow. So get rid of that stun. And then we will attempt to do things. Because these guys are going to start attacking us. And they we have some pretty decent size attacks coming at us eventually here so and those war cries are beside each other that is nasty but they're so heavy they are so heavy on the hits and the life sorry they're so heavy on the life i don't know which one to attack let's attack oh i really wish that attack would have went through and he i wish he didn't guard that attack oh that was bonkers that was so bad um well that's an attack of three you know what it's, it's actually not terrible well, that, this one's actually gonna be pretty bad too because uh, it says after this aspect or an adjacent aspect is declared as an attacker attach a vigor conjured alteration bell to the 
Oh my gosh. That's going to get so big on my turn. And that one's going to get so big on my turn too. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Those ones are going to be bad. Let's just try. Hmm. I don't know which one I want to do. Okay, let's just try. I'm, 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 I'm Hollow is going to try to attack Wild Throw. Yeah, I'm just going to try that. Okay, Hollow is going to try to attack Wild Throw here. Uh, let's see if the guard happens. It is a nine, so that is another guard by the Frost Wild Scourge. That is dang unfortunate. Frostwild Scourge takes two hits, and my guy is exhausted. And the unit stays out there for to do nasty, nasty things to me. So, oh boy. Boy, howdy. Uh, I do not... Oh, my side action was to take a risk. So now it is the Chimera's turn. At least we don't have to roll the behavior dice anymore. Um, now these things are going to start doing their things, and this is going to get really interesting here. So Warcry is going to uh, come at me. But before I do that, Tyler here says, I played Rhymeer against the Bloom Blight Neighbor set aspect and tanked a lot of damage at the beginning. Frost Reserves has clearly been the most difficult uh, Chimera out of from my plays. So much different. Cool. Yeah, um, he does this mighty aspect is big damage. And let's see if we can keep let's see if we can keep throwing the punches. If, if he keeps guarding <laughs> these attacks, um, we'll, we'll eventually whittle him down. But I'm afraid his ultimates are also going to trigger um, at a alarming at an alarming rate, I think. Okay, Warcry is going to attack our Phoenixborn. After this aspect or an adjacent aspect is declared as an attacker, attach a Vigor Conjured Alteration spell to this to the attacker. So he is coming. So this aspect is... So he gets a Vigor. And you know what? Since he's beside Warcry, this Warcry is also going to trigger. It says after this aspect or an adjacent aspect... So it is going to also attach another Vigor. So two Vigors. Oh, I should have tried to take... Oh, I really wish that would have taken out. That is just bonkers mad. <laughs> so that is coming... That This attack is coming at our Phoenixborn for four damage. For four damage. That is just nuts. These guys are exhausted. I, I think Ramia just I think for the time being, I think you're just gonna need to take those four those four hits. So I'll just stack I'll just stack them up on her like this. Actually, I'll just put them right just just above her. There we go. So four hits. Just like that. And he is, well, at least he is now exhausted, but that is besides the point because now he's going to also trigger <laughs> on the next turn. Plus, look how many red rains tokens that is. That is so many red rains. If I cannot clear these, my turn. Okay, well, I can't do it. So I'll lower this dice by one to unstun Ancestor Spirit. He's just going to get stunned again at the very end here because that ultimate's going to trigger. And I, I, may, I may as well try to take out something here. Uh, I'm maybe I don't go to standard two quite yet. Hey, I like I like I'm like I'm like it, it. It like I said, it's a challenge. It's a good challenge. This is just a bad. This is just bad luck combo right beside each other here. Ancestor spirit's gonna try to take out that wild throw. Uh, so again, we'll see if the guard happens. The guard does not happen. That is a three. So that attack is going to go through to wild throw here because um, it was a life of one. It's a blood of one. So another hit goes through. Um, but that is also going to deal damage straight to that ancestor spirit. So they are also um, off of my field. 
Okay, and then I don't have a side. Oh, well, I did the side action. It was to unexhaust. So I still have this one basic dice left here. War cry. Okay, so he's going to come in. We have to attach a vigor onto him because he's attacking. And since an adjacent is attack, we have to attach another vigor onto him. That is just bonkers mad. And therefore, that is going to come and it's going to deal three damage to our. So three plus four, that is a, that is seven damage in total on Rhymea right now out of her 20 starting health. And I am... I think I am out of I am out of actions to do anything here, so I have to pass. Currently, um, a sweeping strike is going to come into play here, and it's going to deal. It's going to come and attack my rightmost unit because of the symbol right here. So it's going to attack it, uh, dealing three damage. Easy enough to kill off that hollow. Easy enough to kill off hollow. So that's going to go into my discard pile here, and. It says, after this unit destroys a unit an opponent controls, I have to do this three. So since the attack value here is three, I have to do this three times. Place a wound token on their Phoenix Born or rightmost, uh, or their rightmost unit. <clears throat> that was a lot of damage coming at me here. Um, well, I guess I could put one damage on the spectral charger mount and then I can do two more damage on right here so she took oh, she took nine damage in the first round here oof 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 um I'm still at a pass yeah, I'm still at a pass, and now the Chimera is going to pass because they don't have any action. So this is the end of the round. And so let me just grab here. I always have to go through the end of round summaries here. Um, we get to recover. I don't have any recover values or anything like that. So we get to remove exhaustion tokens off of our, off of our cards and off of these folks. Uh, we get to exhaust dice, which I definitely will exhaust that die. Uh, place red rain tokens. Place one red rain token on the Chimera for each aspect still in play, resolving the ultimate card if applicable. So I still got three aspects in play. And so therefore, three tokens are still going to come out. <clears throat> Just like that. Yeah, oof. Those war the war cry are getting nasty. They are getting out of hand. Vincent, way out of hand, way, way out of hand here. Uh, so three red rains tokens go on to the Chimera, which is going to trigger the ultimate. So let's take a look at what it says here. Uh, remove red rains tokens from the Chimera equal to the ultimate value. So we will remove those three now. Discard all cards that the Chimera does not own. Destroy the leftmost unit controlled by each of the Chimera's opponents and attach a stun conjuration alteration spell to all units and phoenix born so the left so this guy did get destroyed i should have put the so do you know what i forgot that that was going to i should have read that ahead of time i should have just destroyed that unit right off the bat here so that yeah i should have actually just destroyed i should have actually just destroyed that spectral charge mount right off the bat instead of putting that one extra one on them uh, when this unit is destroyed, place all allies into my hand. So I should have done it that way. Yep, you didn't see anything. That's correct. Uh, but I do have to stun the Phoenix Born, which is now considered exhausted. Uh, da -da -da -da. Remove this card and the top behavior card from the game. And so now we are... Uh, so now this guy has got... Phase two stuff coming at me. Ugh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, now we got to replenish aspects. So I'm just going to just move these just over just a tad so that I have some room for 
because we are at the threat value is five. So we have to reveal two more aspects coming into play for the Frost Wild Scourge. Uh, replenish any status tokens if we needed to. There's no status tokens that need to be replenished. So now we're back to the top of the plane. So we're going to switch the first plane. Oh my. Oh no. He gets to go. For, he gets to go first. And look what's coming at me. Oh, I guess we have to reveal things first. Oh, as long as it's not attack if able. Oh, yeah. Uh, we will roll our dice. Give me something good to eat. Uh, class, class, class. Basic, basic. Basic, basic. Class, class, class. Classic. Classic, classic, classic. Discard any cards that we want. Nope, I'm going to keep those. So one, two, three. Uh, oh, at least, <laughs> at least I drew into a battle seer, which has quick strike. Not like I like that. It's very expensive. It's very expensive. Uh, and I drew into another hollow and another summon ancestor and my summon ancestor spirit. So I got so that so we got, we have that. Yeah, now we're on to the now we're on to the thing. So now we get to do the so the chimera gets to go first. And it's just a reveal. It's just a one. Well, that's good. Crushing grip. The opposing player's leftmost unit is considered to be exhausted. Mmm. This unit will block for the chimera and guard for aspects without this ability. Yay. Left most units considered exhausted. That's stupid. <laughs> Good dice roll. Bad luck on the aspect. My turn. Okay. Well, then I guess my turn is going to turn into a little bit easier-ish. Easier-ish. I am going to uh, spend three basics. Which ones would I want, though? One, two, three basics for Ancestral Army. And that's going to bring in two Ancestor Spirits. One and two. Two Ancestor Spirits. And uh, my side action. Hmm. Considered to be exhausted. Hmm. I think I can live with that for right now. I don't really want to mess with my dice too much just yet. Okay. That's all I am going to do for my main action, side action this time around. Let's see what the Chimera is going to do because, oh my gosh, that thing is getting larger and larger. Still rolling basics, and I rolled a two this time around. What is two? Attack if able. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to attack. <laughs> he's going to attack how many more one two three four oh at least there's only one there's only one conjuration just there's only one vigor conjuration left so at least this other one at least he's not going to get two more on him at least he's not going to get two more on him all all the vigors are accounted for now and so he's going to attack with a one two three four attack attack of five an attack of five I am guessing, oh my gosh, here I go again. I forgot to resolve my Ancestor Spirit abilities. Draw one card. Yeah. I forgot to resolve the abilities once again. I keep forgetting to do these ones. I will draw a card. And put one on the bottom of my deck. 
and I am not going to do that with the other one. I don't think, I think I have okay cards in my hand here. No, actually, you know what? Let's do it again. Let's do, let's do the other ancestor spirit. And I will put this one just like that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go, we're going to reveal this. So he's going to attack if able. He is going to attack. And do you know what? I think. I think I am going to have to block this attack. I think I am going to have to block this attack. I am going to have to block this attack with one of these ancestor spirits. Uh, that's just why I can't let her take. I can't let her soak up another damage. So ancestor spirit is going to get destroyed, and two more da and two damage are going to go on to War Cry, and at least War Cry is now exhausted for the purposes of countering <laughs> okay and then yep so that's that's their turn so let's go on to my turn here Tyler so you're saying at least Ramia doesn't have any reaction spells I, I wish she had some reaction spells honestly let's go with Gosh, that is so nice to see. That is so nice to see. I do have now another summon ghostly mount. It's going to cost me a basic. So now it has been focused twice, which now I can bring out those nightmare steeds. So that was my main action. Uh, and then my, oh gosh. I'm guessing my side action. I guess my side action is to maybe bring out that 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 mount. So for one of these and one of these, I'll exhaust this once. Yeah, I'll exhaust once and put ancestral army face down. And since it's focused twice, I get to bring out nightmare mount it's got terrifying this unit cannot be blocked or guarded against by units with attack values of one or less that's not going to be a problem but at least it's got attack four life four at least it's got an attack four life four maybe i should have may well do you know what maybe i should bring in that maybe i should bring in that uh quick strike again you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself here. I am actually going to bring in the quick strike mount. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm I'm going to back it up. I'm going to do it that way. Okay. So those were gone. We are on to the Chimera's turn. Okay, there's a Red Reigns. And it's a, oh, it's a one again. It's just a reveal. It's just a reveal. Giant's Might. When this unit comes into play, attach a number of Vigor Conjure Alteration spells equal to the Chimera's current phase. Hey, I can't attach any Vigors onto that one because they are all out. They are all in the they are all in play. So that is actually that's a blessing in disguise. Actually, this unit cannot be blocked or guarded against. Okay, cool. Okay, well, now that that's a thing, now that that's a thing, I'm thinking, so he's exhausted already. I think I can do some, I can do some other things here. I am going to, I need to, I need to attempt this. I need to attempt this attack against Warcry here with my Spectral Charger mount. I do need to. I, I I need to attempt this attack. Uh, let's see if the uh, Chimera guards. Oh no! Wait! Oh no! Wait! Crushing grip is in play. Ooh, never mind. Let's wait. Let's back that up. Crushing grip is in play. This has got the defender, so we need to uh, take out that first. Oh well, that makes my decision a little bit easier here. I'm just going to attack crushing grip with ancestor spirit. 
Uh, and they are just going to trade. We The Chimera is not going to guard for it. Oh, wait. That is the... Oh, you are right, Vin Tyler. That is my leftmost unit, which is considered to be exhausted. Oh, no. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's try this again then. That is, he's considered to be exhausted. Oh. Well, dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Okay, wait. So let's just take a look at what's going to happen. Let's do, let's just take a look at what thing what's going to happen here. I'm just trying to see here some things that I need to maybe make happen. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, let's tr Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Let's try. I just don't know which word. I don't know which order. You could also summon the mount earlier since you need unexhausted. Yeah, I well, I know I did because he was the 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 ancestral army wasn't exhausted yet. Yeah, I just can't. I can't bring in. I can't bring in another mount. I could bring in another mount, but I do need that unexhausted ally. You can also summon the mount earlier since you needed an unexhausted. I I had I had the unexhausted. I had the unexhausted. Uh, the blah blah. blah -ba -ba um. Oh, because it was crushing gripped. Oh no, yeah. Oh, can I reconnaissance this? Have I done anything major here? Can I reconnaissance? We didn't we didn't see anything here. This game's hard enough without me cheating. <laughs> oh darn it. Okay. Um I know we didn't see anything here. People watching after the fact are gonna be like, oh, I could do that? No. Okay, wait. Could I actually rec no? Mm. I'm just trying to think of. Are we able to reconnaissance this? Can we recon this? Would we be able to? What do I just have to do? I just have to unexhaust. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, I just need to unexhaust this. I get my two dice back he goes back into my conjuration pile they are just, it's, so it's kind of like it's kind of like this right and then I just could be able to take that turn I would be able to take that turn which then that turn would have been should have been then if so the, okay so this is the okay so this would have been the state so then so then this turn, instead of doing the mount, what I should have done then is probably just use this Ancestor Spirit to uh, attack. Since this one's the exhausted unit, I'll use this Ancestor Spirit to attack Crushing Grip. I think that's going to be that. Yeah, okay. So then he and this, it's not going to guard because it's got the defender ability. And so they swap, boom, boom, bang, bang. Uh, he goes away. This is going to go away. Deals one damage to the Chimera. And then this would have got revealed. This one would have got revealed. So now it's back on to me. <laughs> okay. I, if, that's the, if that's the correct order of things that should have happened. Oh no. I'll wait, Vincent. Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. I'm assuming we're going to go for the replay here. Uh, Ashes Reborn. 
the there's so many uh, the mighty aspect deck we've got a few uh, ability so i will go oh, 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 oh right, right right so my main action was to attack the thing which now this guy is now on it so now i could actually yeah i could actually bring in the mount now as a side action that's right that that bring in that whoops quick straight mount as the side action that turn is over then we did the reveal now it's our turn yeah for a game that isn't overly difficult the text on cards definitely has the that's where the complexity comes in that's where the complexity comes in on this game. So now we actually have the quick strike to essentially deal with the war cry. Yeah, we have the, oh wait, now I got, wait, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be careful here. I do have the quick strike to deal with the war cry but if i do that this is the next aspect that's going to come into play and it's going to want to it's going to want to attack my charger mount which i guess then i'll have to oh gosh i'll need the side action unexhausting rhymira here so that i can guard with her oh no, wait I, she can still guard even if she's exhausted she can still guard if she's exhausted. I believe that's still a thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to make sure that I do this correctly here. I can use this. Mm, you're correct. You're correct, Tyler. Because then I did get my answer. Wait, that's not bad because you can use Ancestral Army and have three attack units back on the board. Oh, oh, oh if, 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 this, if, this gets if this gets destroyed, if this gets destroyed, I kind of don't want it because then this is also, because if, if Sweeping Strike destroys a unit, it deals more damage to, um, well, I guess it's dealing three. It's dealing three damage to... Uh, Rhymia, anyways, it's going to deal three damage to him, and then it's going to also gonna deal three damage to them. Okay. Mm, this is gargle, blah, blah, gargle, gargle, gargled. Okay. I'm going to do it this way, though. I am going to attempt the attack on Warcry. I'm going to attack Warcry here. Let's just see if that's guard. Your first plan is good, I think. Quick strike, Warcry, then guard with Rhymia. So. Let's quick strike war. Let's try to attack war cry here. Let's just hope he doesn't. He let's just hope that he doesn't guard. And it's a seven. That's awesome. So quick strike is gonna go through against war cry. War cry is done. War cry is done. That's two hits. Done. Two vigors go back into the pool though. That can be triggered. Uh, da, 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 that is done. And a uh, side action. Hmm. Oh, I could, I could side, I could. Oh, I forgot, to, I forgot to exhaust one of these. I forgot to exhaust once for my uh, mount here. But I think you know what? I think I could do it again though as a side action. Oh, I don't have no, I don't have any allies in play. Dang it. Oh no. Okay, so as a side action, I do need to meditate once. Shared sorrow, not a big deal. So I'll bring that one up to a wolf's head. Okay. Now we are on to okay, let's see what here happens here. So let's go over here. Sweeping Strike is going to attack. I will guard. 
I'll just turn Rhymea sideways here. I will guard with Rhymea. That'll she'll absorb three more hits. So that is one, two. Uh, what are we at? Eight. So we'll just turn that to a, so that's she's got eleven hits on her. And that is done. So it didn't destroy any units. Okay. I am now going to bring in. What do I have an, wait, ooh, I should have, I should have meditated twice last time. Shoot. Okay, I am going to then. Okay, uh, wolf's head, this, and this to bring in a battle seer. So she's also got quick strike. She also has alert. She doesn't exhaust when she is countering. Uh, and then my other. So then I'm going to side action again. I'm going to exhaust. I'm going to meditate one to bring this to a wolf's head. Alrighty, now we're back on to Giant's Might here. Um, and it's going to attack my Phoenix Born for one. Which, you know what? Let's block that attack with Battle Seer. And we're going to count. So, we're, so we'll deal three damage to it. It's going to go away. And we do not exhaust due to that countering and that's just going to deal one damage to her so that is a blood of two Whew. okay okay well then i can He's exhausted, so we're pretty much taking turns now. So with this wolf's head, I'm going to bring out a hollow. And I get to lower these two down to basics, essentially. And I am I do not have a side action. Looks like the Chimera is going to pass out of action. So now we have some things to do. We have some things to do, like... Let's just hope that we can take out some of these nasty. Let's, oh, this would be perfect if the Chimera does not guard. If the Chimera doesn't guard, this will be actually pretty decent for us. Uh, let's try. Battle Seer is going to attack the Sweeping Strike. And that is a one, so that attack is going to go through for three. That is two more blood. And whoop, that should exhaust. That should exhaust her. And I don't have any side actions onto them. They're going to pass because they are exhausted onto us. And now Hollow is going to attack Warcry. And just hope that it doesn't guard. Hope that it doesn't guard. Hope that it doesn't guard. And that's a three. So it doesn't guard it. That is two more damage over onto Warcry, which, hey, 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 that is gone. That is two more blood. And wow. At one time, when this looked like things were, we, looks like that we were down and out, we have crawled out of a hole. Fingers crossed. I think think we played 100%. I, I, we, we may have. We may not have. I don't know. But we didn't see anything. This game is hard. So <laughs> let's go with that. And so we are now completely. So now we have, we have no dice left. So I can't actually take this unstun off yet. Let's go to the end of the round. Which we get to recover. And you know what? Battle Seer's got a recover of two, so that damage actually comes off. We're going to remove our exhaustion tokens. Just like that. Uh, she's going to unrotate here. We 
are going to exhaust dice. There's no di dice to exhaust. We're going to place red rain. Oh, look at that. We, we cleared the field. There's no red rain tokens. There. We got to, oh, it's like, it's like the start of the game again. And we are going to replenish aspects. So five aspects are going to come out at us. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, da, 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 da. Replenish that. There's no status tokens to replenish. We will pass the first player marker over to us. Oh, ho, ho. phew. That looks absolutely lovely to us. Let's roll up our dice. Okay, power. 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 Oh, look at look. These are decent. It's a decent enough roll for the third round of the game. We get to exhaust cards. I am going to discard that card. Let's draw up a fresh five here. Three, four, five. Let's draw up a fresh five here. See what we can get. Another summon ghostly mount. Dark presence. Shared sorrow. Shared sorrow. And another battle seer. Okay, wait. Okay, let's take a look at Dark Presence here. Uh, this is choose a target unit you control to gain the following. Terrifying, cannot be blocked or guarded against attack values of one. Uh, reduce the attack value of target unit. Okay. Uh, two Shared Sorrows. What does shared, shared Sorrow here say? Discard one card from your hand with a magic play cost of one or more. Search your discard pile for another card with a magic play cost of X and place it into your hand. Deal X damage to a target unit. Oh, that could actually be neat. Very situational, but that could be neat. Now, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Oh, we, we got nine attack here. Oh, man. It's, uh, it takes them down to nine. Ooh, gosh. Do I? Oh, no, I'm not going to get risky. <laughs> Vincent, you're, I'm so impatient. I would totally side action nightmare mount and then attack face. Oh, you know what? I, do you know what? Because nightmare mount, that brings in another, wait, that brings in another four, doesn't it? Uh, that'd be eight, 10. That'd be, thir that'd be 13 face damage. Save your die since the mount provides ancestral army once removed. Mm. Oh my gosh. Wait, wait. So I would actually do, I would be doing 8 and 13. So that's five left. And then I could actually have, oh gosh. Oh, right. I have to replace the, oh, yes. Hollow. Mm. Dang, dang, dang. Okay. I am also, you know what? Thought did cross my mind too. Thought did cross my mind too. Play it safe. Wait for the aspects. <sighs> sure. Let's play it safe. Um The mount is good though. I think the mount I think the mount is a good play. I think the mount is a good play here. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so as a side action. Okay, as a side action, I'll do one and one. And I will do the nightmare mount on hollow. Whoops. I'll do the nightmare mount on hollow. And then as a main action, oh, what are we going to say? Attack face with hollow, then mount maybe? Oh, no, it has to be on a, yeah, it has to be on exhausted. And then, you know what? As a main action, hmm. Still quite a few, that's still quite a bit. Do, 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 do. Yeah, okay, so then as a main as a main action, I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. I'm going to bring out another Battle Seer. There we go. 
Oh gosh. Okay. Now, now we now we see what now we see what's gonna happen here. Now we see what's gonna happen with these aspects. But I do have lots of quick strike out. Okay, so we got a basic, but we got eleven. What does eleven say? That's gonna be like a stunner. Something that's gotta be like a stunner, like a stone cold stunner. You hear the glass break and uh, attach a stun conjure energy spell to the target rightmost unexhausted unit, and then reveal. Okay, so stunned rightmost, and then we reveal this which is a charge fist. We've seen that one already. It's got three uh, status tokens on it. Okay, so what's that? So wait, that, 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 that's eight and six. That is four, <laughs> eight and six. That's four, that's 14 damage we could deal to, but then we're all, but then all of us are exhausted. I think we should just start Oh gosh. <laughs> it's so Oh, it's so tempting. That is so so tempting. Oh my gosh. Okay, well then wait, okay, so I can do this one though. Discard one card from your hand with a magic play cost of Yeah, okay. I'm going to pay I'm going to I'm going to play a sympathy and a basic for a shared sorrow. Uh da 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 da. da. I'm going to play for uh sorrow here. It says discard one card from my hand with a magic play at cost of one or more. I'm going to I'm just going to discard a shared sorrow cuz it's got a magic cost of 2. Uh, search your discard pile for another card with a magic um, play cost of X, which is two. So I can find something else that has a magic cost of two. May as well just bring back. I just may as well bring back the one that I just discarded, uh, and then I can deal X damage to a target unit. Uh, X is the magic, so two, so I can actually deal the two damage to charge fist here, which is one blood. There you go. That's done. Whoops. Okay, that was my main action. Side action is I'm not going to really do anything for my side action. I am done for that one. Let's do the do ba 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 do. Oh no, a twelve. What's a twelve? That's the red rains token, right? Yeah, red rains token on the frost wild, and then you have to reveal. And it's another charge fist. That's the third charge fist. So there's no more of them in the in the game. Okay. Okay. So what am I at? Still at? I'm still at eight. I'm still at. I'm still at eight and six, which is fourteen. If I only just deal three more damage to this guy, somewhere. I wish I could just deal three more damage to this guy somewhere, so that I can just swing with these. Swing with these folks. <laughs> it's kind of like I, I kind of like want, kind of want him to attack so I, I could, I could like defend, I can counter with one of my battle seers. It's kind of what I want that happen. Hmm. Okay. So my. Huh. Couldn't actually do this one. I couldn't actually do this one again to do the charge fist because char I, I don't have any more cards that have a magic cost of two in my hand. Oh my gosh, we're we're getting we're getting right down to it. We're getting to an interesting point of the game here. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Oh 
gosh. I really don't know. Attack with only the mount. Eh. Okay, what's, uh, what's Vincent's bit? Attack with only the mount and keep the seers as blockers. Y yeah. They were saying like the mount into like say like charge fist. Just to kind of keep those down. <sighs> yeah. I can see. I can see. I, I just kind of wish there was a kind of like, because this one, this one we do know is going to be a blood. This one's going to be a blood two. This one's going to be a blood two. That's two more damage. So that takes us down to the 15. Because then if I attack him into that one, that's going to be the fifth. That's going to be the, uh, so that takes him down to 15. Hmm. I don't even know if did I do even do a main action yet? I don't think I have done a main action yet. Okay. Spectral Charger Mount is going to attack into Charge Fist. Let's just see if the Chimera guards that. The Chimera does not. So it takes him, it it goes, it goes into him. Uh he deals it's quick strike, so he deals his damage before. So that's a blood of one. That's done. So he is. We kind of actually maybe wanted that to, I don't know if we wanted that to guard, but four is better than two. Okay, let's see what the Chimera does. Okay, so that's another Red Reigns. And, oh gosh, that was a 12. That was another, that's another 12. Uh-oh. This, whoa, our, 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 uh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and then this is Giant's Might comes into play. Attach a Vigor Conjured Alteration spells equal to the current phase. We are in phase two, so we got to get two Vigors onto this aspect. Oh, dear. Okay. Okay. I seize it. I seize it. Uh, I'm guess. I. Oh, gosh. Kind of want we kind of wanted that. Oh, well, okay. Well, okay. You know what? You know what? I think it, um, Battle Seer is going to attack into Giant's Might. That is a four, so it's going to go through. So Quick Strike happens, uh, defeating it for Blood Two. Those are done. Uh, that was a, that was an attack. Um, is that what this ultimate does, Tyler? Da, 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 da. Uh, phase two. It says, just says deal three damage to each Phoenix born. The Chimera. Yeah, and then attach a stun alteration spell to all units. So all units will become stunned, and then three damage goes to the uh, Phoenix Born. Yes, reroll two basics. Thank you for the uh, Vigors. One Red Reigns, one basic. Ooh, ooh, we're getting close to that one. Okay, so now it is our... Is it? Uh, is uh, yeah. It's. I think it's our. It's our Chimera's turn, isn't it? Because I did that. I guess I should have done a. I'm guess. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm just gonna lower this one as a side action to bloop, take off that stun. Okay, that's a basic, and it's a nine. Nine is going to be. Oh dear goodness. Nine is going to be deal one damage to all exhausted. Units and exhausted Phoenix born and then reveal. Okay, so oh gosh, so that's that's a damage and that's a damage and she's still considered exhausted, so that's a that's another damage. And then we have to reveal, which is wild throw. When this unit comes into play, attach a stunned counter alteration spell to the opposing target leftmost unit. And then move it to the right. 
So, boom, he's going to cut you. This spectral charge mount is just going to come all the way over here. Okay. Okay. Oh, we are we are so close, aren't we? We are so close. What shall I do as my next action is Hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm so close. I'm so close. I am actually just going to do this one again. I'm going to spend two dice. I'll discard a card from my hand. It has a magic value of one, so I can find another card that has a magic value of one, which will be my hollow. And then I can deal one damage which I'll deal it to Wild Throw, which is one more blood. <sighs> okay, there we go. Uh, Chimera's turn. I've, I've whittled down all of those. Oh gosh, there's another Red Reigns. Dang it. Uh, and this one's a five, and the five is going to be uh, Reveal and then Attack with the Revealed. Oh, okay. Revealed. It is wild throw. When this comes into play, attach a stunned conda alteration spell. Target leftmost unit. And put it to the right of everything else. There we go. And then I have to attack with it. And it's going to attack my rightmost uh, unit. Uh, attacks my rightmost unit. Interesting. Oh my gosh! Attacks my rightmost unit, and he can that. That's three. That's three attack. I can take. Oh, sorry. Yes, left. Sorry, leftmost unit. It is my nightmare mount. Yes. Um. I keep saying right. I don't know why I kept saying right. So that's going to attack that one. It's just going to be three. It's just an attack of three. You know what? He's going to take that three damage. Whoops. And I'm choosing not to counter it. I'm going to choose not to counter it. So then on my turn here, Yep. So now then on my turn, I am just going to do face damage of uh, seven. I'm going to do seven damage to the Frost Wild Scourge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, they are at a pass and I am at a pass. So that is going to be all she wrote on that one. I do have a plan here, folks. I think it's going. I think we're going to be all. I think we are going to be all right. I got. I got a funny feeling we are going to be all right. So we are both at a pass. Let's do this thing. Uh, we will do recovers. We'll do recovers. He does not have any recovers. Uh, no recovers. She's going to recover. And then we will remove our exhaustion tokens off of everything. We are then going to exhaust dice. I am going to keep that dice around for a little bit. Uh, we will place red rain. I do have to place a red rain token. So we do have to trigger the. We do have to trigger the ultimate here. We do have to trigger the ultimate, which is going to be remove red rain tokens equal to the ultimate value. Uh, deal three more damage to our Phoenix born here. So we are at 15 damage. Do, 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 and attach a stun conjuration spell to all units and Phoenix born. So 
where are they here these ones already have one so these ones definitely will now need stuns everything's everything's stunned now okay uh, remove this card in the top behavior card from the game yep and now we re we replenish aspects oh gosh we're getting we're getting right down to it i think i think we're going to be i think we're going to be okay though i think we're going to be okay that flips over to them okay now we're going to go back up to rolling our dice and getting our cards why have all my cards i've really i've really done bad of just getting all my cards just kind of going over 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 to where i like to keep my dice here da, da, da. Uh, that's gonna stay there that that and that that's going to be okay for us i think okay they are for oh wait i'm gonna see if i want to yep that one and then one two three four more cards into my hand okay all right let's take a look at what's there so they are going to possibly get another red rains token oh nope and they rolled a six this time what's six on this one reveal and attach a vigor conjuration alteration spell okay so we'll reveal and get a vigor uh ooh, crushing grip opponent's leftmost is considered exhausted and it's Defender. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, then, I am just going to then, since I am going to be, I'm, I, I'm going to be okay, folks, because I am just going to, oh, wait, that has Defender. Damn it. Damn it. It's lousy Defenders. Okay. I'll lower this one to Unexhaust Battle Seer. Battle Seer is going to attack Crushing Grip. We'll see. Uh, and, and it deals its attack value before that. So that goes down one. And we have to roll one. Basic die. Still remains as basic. That's awesome. Okay. We are going to now do the Chimera's turn. Chimera's turn is going to come in. Oh my gosh. Still a basic. Now it's a 10. What is 10 here? Attach a stun conjured alteration spell to the rightmost unexhausted unit. It's exhausted. I uh, can't attach it to conjuration. I can't attach it. Okay. I didn't do anything else. Uh, we will just then reveal. Okay. Uh, sweeping. Ooh, this one's the one with sweeping strike. That's a nasty one for us. Okay. Um, well, now that that's done, I'm going to then just lower another. I'm just going to lower another dice. I'm going to lower another dice to take off this one. And we will attack. We will just attack Chimera for four. Just like that. Uh, Chimera's turn. That's a red rain, so that we got a red rain's token now. Do 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 and do. Uh, da, 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 da. And we rolled a four, which is going to be reveal and then attack with the revealed aspect. Uh, it is war cry, so it is going to attack us with. It, we have to attach a vigor on conjuration alteration spell when it's declared as an attacker. It's going to attack our. Oh my gosh, they are exhausted too. Dang it! Uh, going to attack our Phoenix Born for two more damage. That is now seventeen out of the twenty damage. At least it is exhausted now but now it is our turn and i am just going to lower one of my dice to unexhaust battle seer and i will take battle seer and i will attack frost wild scourge face for three damage 
<sighs> that was exhausting. That was that was that was an ex- that was an exhausting battle. Holy smokes. Rymia Careworn. Wow, what a what a deck. What a thing. I wasn't I, I left her I left her exhausted for like the entire <laughs> left her stunned and exhausted for the entire freaking game and just let these battle seers and mounts just kind of go to town for a while there but I minus what happened there in the the safer way was the best play after all Vincent it was the safer play after all oh my gosh I I am just now I am just now like mentally exhausted from that one there were so many things coming into play on us and whatnots and keeping track of all of those status effects and first time playing standard two in quite some time uh really enjoyed that 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 extra just that extra aspect just having to deal with that extra aspect in the in the play here was thing just have to maybe go we just might have to maybe go back to that one thing i hopefully we reconnaissance it uh as much as we possibly could there for a bit but um i i I think it was a it it was an okay playthrough it was it was uh it wasn't the cleanest i did keep having to go back and redo some things but it was uh wasn't the cleanest but hey i'll take i'll take it with the asterisks technically maybe i don't know when i watch it back when I watch it back, I will uh, see what ha- what actually happened there and see if we reconnaissance it uh, appropriately. Um, and yeah, that was that. Thank you, Kel- Kelvin. Stuck around with us for a while here. Says woohoo, uh, Tyler. Thank you. He says nicely done. And yeah, my goodness gracious. Well, I want to say that it's been a while, but you know what? It hasn't been a while because this upcoming Thursday. Actually, I'm just going to switch on back over. I'm just going to switch over to my face uh, camera here. Uh, coming up on Thursday, I got my stand my guy my my standard two playthrough against the uh, Blight of Neverset Bloom. Uh, I have done. I did some deck building with the uh, Mayoni Viper precon deck for that one. Uh, Definitely stick around. I do the first part of the video is me explaining my deck building uh, for the for the uh, gameplay, and then I do the gameplay. So uh, I'll leave it for you to watch the video, whether or not I was successful or not in that standard two gameplay against the Blight of Never Set Bloom. And yeah, ah, oh, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot more because I'm gonna be very busy coming up. But I did make it. Uh, can't can't wait to see the changes made. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, you know what? Um, campaign uh, deck building is really really neat. It's really kind of cool. It's really kind of easy. Um, standard one essentially they say is you just play with the precon deck. Play with the precon deck. Play it as is. Now when you move to standard two, keep your precon deck. So I'll keep my Mayoni precon deck. But then it says go select another precon deck. Select that one, and you know what? Choose three cards. Choose three cards from that precon deck. Take all copies of that card. So there's three copies. Take all copies of those three cards, and now add it to your card pool. Now, put together your thirty card deck. It's just like that. It's just, it's just that easy. Uh, make sure that you have the appropriate. You can adjust your dice levels. You can adjust what you're going to bring into the bring into the into the game uh, dice wise make sure you have all your appropriate conjurations if necessary but that's the and then if you're going from standard two to standard three well then it says choose a precon deck again choose three more cards and take all copies of those cards and add it to your card pool so now you've got another six cards three copies each and your original precon deck and do what you need to do in order to be successful against that one. It really kind of opens up the ability for the deck building in this game because the deck building in this game is what's really kind of neat. And I've only just dabbled, like I've just dabbled in it with these campaign modes. And yeah, because every single card can be played together. 
Uh, your deck is just up to your own imagination. You just have to make sure that you're bringing the appropriate dice magic into the game, and you have the and you have all the appropriate conjurations. Uh, playing around with the the dice magic that is the interesting thing. Uh, do you keep it? Do you keep it dual colored? Do you go tri colored? Do you have three? Do you do some sort of like rainbow thing where you maybe have more than three? Like that's where a real interesting piece of this game comes in because you kind of like, oh, I can see that card can combo with that card, but I got to make sure that I have the right magic um, in bringing into my games. So cool. Love this game. Love this game. I always thank Plat Hat Games at Nikki and Nick over there. Um, they've kept me recent with the red rains expansions uh they've provided those for me to bring on to do content here on the channel so i like to thank nikki and nick and plata games for sending me those review copies of these games for me to showcase and play out uh on this channel uh it it means the world to me and i'm glad to bring ashes reborn content to to the world um yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave it at uh that because uh we got more ashes reborn coming up this thursday also what's coming up this thursday as well is the next episode of the T talking tabletop podcast um which which i'm gonna put together the final edits uh tomorrow and that's gonna be hitting your pod catchers of choice spotify apple google uh, those will be coming to you Thursday morning uh, for your listening your listening pleasure. Uh, I do a recap of my gaming weekend with my buddies for my birthday. Uh, so I talk about my experience with Blood Rage and I talk about my experience with Last Light uh, and, and te teaching some people those and teaching those people those games and what happened in those game sessions. It's it was really quite fun, uh, really quite thing and. Uh, uh, and of course the, oh, I guess, I guess I have also dropped the ball. I've done reaction videos to the latest, uh, Siege of Lords wall. Yep. That's what, yep. Not, not Lords of Siege wall, the Siege of Lords wall. I've done reaction videos to everything, but I have not done the, uh, one about the Phoenix born, uh, specific cards, which I probably should do at some point in time here because uh, I did it for the other ones. I, sh I should keep on. It just got super, super busy the, this past weekend when they released those uh, teasers. So I um, guess I have to really just kind of just sit down and do it. Okay. Well, I don't know what else I can say. Next Tuesday, we're going to be doing Nova Roma on the channel. I really look forward to that. Really, really, really look forward to that. If you're in the Saskatoon area and you're watching this stream or you're watching this video after the fact, uh, this Friday night is Games Night at Amazing Stories over on 8th Street, uh, hosted by yours truly. I'm probably bringing that one. I'm probably bringing that one to Game Night. So uh, if you're interested in playing that, let, send me a message. Let me know. Uh, we're going to and then I'll probably bring some other later some things along the way. All right. I think that's everything. Did I miss anything? I think I've got everything. It's starting to get late. Thank you for sticking with me for this long. If you have, drop a like on the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because uh, road to 1,000. We're on the road to 1,000 here. And, of course, the notification bell is there if you want to get notified. Every Tuesday night, I am going live. And little videos drop out every now and then, like this Thursday when that uh, new other Ashes Reborn video comes out again. All right, folks. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the stream. You're welcome, Tyler, as always. Thank you for joining me. And yes, good night, Vincent, and good night, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful time watching this lovely stream. And thank you for all of your advice there in the chat because this was a team effort, I think, this one tonight. I will full give full credit. I was not on top of my game 100%, but hey, We'll take it. A win's a win, right? Even if it has an asterisk beside it. <laughs> All right, folks. Have yourselves a great evening. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers, y'all.